Captain, there is a strange presentation occurring on that spaceship. What should we do? Follow closely, number one. We do not want to miss this presentation. I think it is going to be a good one. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone, my name is Craig Salahammer, and for the next two hours, we're gonna focus on understanding and resolving free buffer weight contention. Now this presentation is gonna get very detailed, but you know, you can summarize free buffer weights very simply actually. It's like this, there's an oracle foreground process that needs to access a block, but it discovers that block is not in the buffer cache. So it's gonna have to go to the IO subsystem to get the block and then put that in the buffer cache. However, before it can do that, it needs to find a buffer in the buffer cache that it can replace. The process of trying to find an available buffer to replace can be daunting for a server process. And if it takes too long to find that available buffer that it can replace, it will actually stop burning CPU and wait, and it will yell out free buffer wait. So in a nutshell, that's what we're gonna talk about in this presentation. Now, before we get into the details of the presentation, I want to introduce myself. My name is Craig Shalahammer, and I'm a longtime Oracle DBA, and I specialize in Oracle database performance. I do a lot of performance research work, and I put that in my blog. I'm also the author of a couple books that I'm, that I'm really proud of. I do a lot of conference speaking. I do mentoring and coaching for Oracle and with Oracle DBAs. I'm also a teacher, and I'm an Oracle ACE director. If you want to connect with me, the best way is just simply email me. Email me at craig at orapub.com. That's all it takes. I'm also on Twitter, so you can follow me there. I'm also on LinkedIn, so please connect with me on LinkedIn. And if you want to see what Orapub has to offer Oracle DBAs who specialize in performance, just go to orapub.com. Orapub, the company. Orapub works directly with Oracle DBAs who want to take their performance tuning skills to the next level. It doesn't make any difference if you're just starting to get into Oracle or if you've been doing Oracle performance work for 20 years. If you want to take your performance tuning skills to the next level, we are here for you. And, and how do we serve Oracle DBAs who want, to do the, who want to make this transition? We do that through our blogs, through our webinars, we do that through video seminars just like this. We do classroom training. We do that in a number of formats, whether it's public, whether it's on-site, whether it's through conferences, through Oracle user groups, there's just, you know, through my books, there's just a number of ways that we work directly with Oracle DBAs who want to take that jump to the next level in their Oracle performance tuning work. It's a great job. I love to do that kind of stuff. So here's the outline for the next couple of hours. It's, it looks so simple, but we're gonna get into a lot of detail. I have some surprises for you. I think you're really going to uh, enjoy this. First thing we're gonna get into is the key Oracle buffer cache memory structures. There's just a few of these that we need to be aware of as Oracle DBAs. Once we have that you know, pretty well understood, then we're gonna drill down specifically into the LRUs. Because the LRUs, the least recently used list, that is where free buffer weights come into play. So we really gotta have a good understanding of the internals, the processes, and how that actually works. And then we're gonna get real specific about free buffer weights. But what you're gonna notice though, once you understand the LRUs, the processes in, involved with that, it's it's very obvious why a free buffer weight actually occurs. And then so once we know why it occurs, the solutions will naturally just arise. It's like, it's like it just makes sense. 
So I'm going to actually bring you through a couple of, uh, of the solutions. I'm going to actually going to show you and implement these solutions so we can see how well or how big of a difference they actually make. And then I'm going to give you some pointers to some additional resources where you can go even deeper. The next thing that I want to talk about is the key buffer cache memory structures. Thank you. 